This might be one of the most anticipated tools of 2023. It is finally here, the rigid track saw. We're gonna put this thing through its paces, cutting sheet goods, cutting big old thick walnut and see how it performs as well as go over all the features. And then I'm gonna tell you what's the difference is between this, the rigid and the Ryobi track saws. They kind of look the same, but I think you'll be surprised at the differences here. Let's go. Now, full disclosure, Rigid did send me this. They also sent me the Ryobi and I tore it apart in that review. You gotta go see it. I just wasn't happy with it. But they did send me both of these. I've been a Rigid user and fan since 2017 when I bought my first cordless power tools for woodworking. These Gen 5X drill and driver, I purchased them at Home Depot and have been extremely happy with them and have used them a lot. So I do have high expectations for this saw and I hope it don't let me down. Let's put it through the paces. Now, when you first see the box, the first impression is very similar package to the Ryobi track saw, but that's really where the differences end in my opinion. Everything out of the box feels super high quality. That is a sharp looking saw. Get it sharp. I was impressed with the way this saw looks and feels straight out of the box. This feels like a premium track saw where the Ryobi didn't. It felt, a, it was very underwhelming in my opinion. And they sent me that one as well. So there's really no bias there as far as getting the tool to check out. Watch the Ryobi video, you'll see what I mean. Not impressed. This one out of the box is super solid. I love that they've changed up the construction on this versus the Ryobi, or not really changed it, but they went on a different route, I guess would be a good, better way to say it. But we'll get into all the differences of the Ryobi versus rigid track saw later in the video. Stay tuned. In the box, you do get two 27 and a half inch tracks, which can be mated together with the included hardware. So you get a 55 inch track. That's important because that gives you the full 48 inch cross cut that you're gonna need for plywood, MDF, or any other sheet goods like that. However, thank you, rigid. <laughs> Thank you. You gave us a 60 inch track as well. This is one of the things that I think is gonna set it apart from the Ryobi. There's others, but we'll talk about that. But this is a 60 inch track, which means when you join this in with the 55 inch track, you've got enough to cut a full eight foot sheet of plywood. Thank you. This is an absolute must have in a track saw, if you're asking me, having enough track to be able to cut that full eight foot sheet. Speaking of tracks, they are not compatible with Festool, Milwaukee, Milkita, Powertech, any of those others, these are their own thing. It's not a bad thing if this is the only saw you've got and you're gonna use, it'll be perfectly fine. You can start seeing some attention to detail here that Rigid put in, the, the thought behind these tracks, even the sticker, that's not a sticker, it's etched in there somehow, which will likely wear much, much better than some random sticker you just slap on one. I like that they did that, it looks really good. And in the box with the saw and the two smaller tracks, you do get a track clamp. Now when you put these tracks together, you wanna to use a flat surface like your tabletop, or what I really prefer to do is use a very nice precision straight edge like this. They're very inexpensive, but it does help get everything lined up. That's gonna make sure your cuts are exactly straight every time. Installing the blade, super simple. Like most other track saws, there is a lock so that it locks it in a down position. And there is an arbor lock, the button you push down to keep that arbor from spinning while you change the blade. And this is a standard 5 8 inch arbor, so you'll be able to use any six and a half inch saw blade with that arbor size on this saw. And I do like the fact that they have onboard tool storage here that works well for this saw. Now, one thing I did notice was that riving knife. Now, a lot of saws have riving knives, but one of the complaints I had with the Ryobi track saw was the riving knife on that saw stopped it from being a true plunge saw because of the way it come out and under the blade when you plunge. This one works very much like the Milwaukee where it comes down behind the blade, but it's not interfering with any plunge cutting that you're gonna do. This is implemented well. Let's go over the features of this saw so you kind of know what you're getting. I touched on the onboard tool holder, which includes a wrench for the track and one for the blade change. Next up is the dust port, and this is a common size. Thank you. This is a common size dust port that will fit the Festool dust hose. Yes. <laughs> And this does swivel, so that's a good thing too. The base is made out of aluminum where the side housing and all of this is magnesium. It's a really nice material, makes it lightweight, but also strong. You get two and a quarter inches depth of cut without the track with this saw, which is awesome. The depth of cut indicator and or stop is also really nice. Push button slides really nice. It locks into plate at those detents, which is really, it, it, it works. It works very well. And I like the fact that they included on the track and off the track indicated by the track symbol there. So on tracks in white, off tracks in orange. The saw also bevels negative one all the way to 47. 
and there are positive stops at 0, 22 and a half, and 45. To get to the 47, once you hit 45, you pull the lever and it will go over to the 47. To go to negative one, there is a slide button right there that you push to the back and it will go negative one. There is also a cut window so that you can see the blade as it's cutting or right in front of the blade as it's cutting. And there's a little distance measuring there. What's that for? Now with setting this on the track, it is very easy to adjust to your track. There's two knobs, one on the front of the base, one on the back. You just flip them around till it gets snug and you're good to go. It's that easy. Then if you want that anti-tip feature, you can just push that button. It's going to slip in right under the edge of that piece in the track so that it doesn't tip. This is especially useful on 45s or bevel cuts. So for the very first cut, after you get everything assembled and put together ready to go, you're going to cut this rubber piece to match your saw blade. This happens on every track saw. This is just something that this uh, splinter guards what this is, a little rubber. You're going to cut that with that first cut. Before we put this thing through the test, cutting sheet goods, big old thick walnut. Man, I'm getting hungry. Let's go eat. I don't want a cold sandwich or even have to go get takeout. That's why I signed up for Factor. It's really good food that comes fresh, never frozen to your doorstep. This stuff is seriously good food with a lot of different variety through the week, so I don't get bored eating the same thing. That's one of the reasons I like Factor is it takes the guesswork out of grocery shopping or meal prep. I don't really have to worry about it. I just know that my food's there when I'm ready. And it only takes two minutes. You put it in the microwave, two minutes later, it is ready to eat. I also get to choose how many meals per week I want from four to 18. I like that. I love that I can choose different meal plans if I want to, like Keto, Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, Chef's Choice, and several others. And should I need to go out of town for a week or just skip a week when I don't want this food, all I have to do is skip that week. It's super easy to do on their website. You can also choose add-ons like proteins, juices, protein bites, veggies, and even desserts. Each week you can choose from over 34 chef prepared, dietitian approved meals. I love the fact that I can go in and pick and choose the meals that I want for the upcoming week before it ships. That way you get a variety of food, but you also know what you're gonna be eating. I highly recommend you check out this awesome food for yourself. Go to factor75.com or click the link in the description. Use the code 731Works50, get 50% 50 off your first box. Again, factor75.com, Use code 731BOOKWORKS50. That gets you 50% off your first box. Go check this out. I think you'll like it as much as I do. So breaking down sheet goods with a track saw is where these tools shine. This is the best application for my shop anyway on a track saw because wrestling a big four foot by eight foot sheet of MDF or plywood and making a cross cut on the table saw can be quite frustrating and sometimes dangerous. So I'm glad that we have these type tools to be able to break these down fast. Now this one worked extremely well. I was very surprised by the dust collection on board for a couple of reasons. Number one, the Ralby track saw wasn't that great on dust collection. This one is much, much better. This one equals the Festool or the Milwaukee on the dust collection. Not kidding, standard stock, out of the box dust collection with a dust extractor. Now I was frustrated because the hose kept falling out of this port because they are not an exact match. I would need an adapter to make them fit just right. I was also a little surprised because the blade on the backside of this is exposed. You can see into that blade, there's no cover there. And if they had put a cover there, I think it would have improved the dust collection that much more. I don't know why they left that off. Again, when you break down sheet goods with this, all you have to do is measure over and wherever you measure to when you're cutting in the direction I'm cutting anyway, is the backside of the blade. So I need to allow for that blade curve, which is about a 16th of an inch here. Once you do that, you're gonna get very accurate cut. I was able to get two foot exactly right on the nose. Now, breaking this down in four two foot sections was really quick. I can do this within about a minute and a half or two minutes if I'm not filming it. Try that on a table saw by yourself, you're gonna have trouble. This does have a soft start motor, which I really appreciate. It doesn't jerk to life, so it's not gonna jerk back on you. I also do like that they put a riving knife in here that actually is not a fixed riving knife, but plunges with the blade. Thank you, Richie. Now I do wish that they came with two 30 inch tracks. If you're gonna put two tracks in there, make them two 30 inch tracks. That way we get 60 inches or five feet of cut like the add on track is. You have to get the track set just right to go all the way across a four foot sheet. That way when you start the cut and when you finish the cut, you have full blade through the material. It's not that big of a deal, but if they gave it three inches per track, you wouldn't have any trouble at all. As far as accuracy goes, putting those two tracks together, I've seen zero issues with that so long as you line them up properly. I'm starting to kind of like the idea of the shorter track now, especially if you're in a small shop or you're transporting these. And if you're cutting anything other than sheet goods like two by sixes or two by fours, 
you can do it with this small track and get accurate results. You see here, I got a perfectly square cut with this track. All you have to do is mark a square line and then align up the splinter guard with that and cut. Comes out perfectly square. And the square of the blade to the track is also square. I like that. Now the tracks also have a nice material on the bottom. Some of the less expensive models of track saws, this material is very slick and it doesn't stick properly. On here, they do. So I'm glad that Rigid went with a nice material on the bottom. Now we'll get to the cut quality, how well it performs or maybe how well it doesn't perform. And after that, I'll tell you why this is a much better saw than the Ryobi. And let's see how much power this has. We're gonna cut through a big old thick piece of walnut. It's about one and three quarter inches thick and it will put this to the test if there's a test to be had. Now cutting through it, I did feel it lagging a little bit, but this is a big piece of walnut and even the Milwaukee started bogging a little bit. Not as much as this, but this had plenty of power to power all the way through it. The battery did get quite warm when I was powering through that, but it did it and did it fine. Now the cut quality on this, you can see a little bit of burning on there from this blade, but it was exactly 90 all the way down through there. Everywhere I checked on this board, it cut a perfect 90 degree cut and you can't ask for more than that. I think if you upgraded this blade to a better blade, it would likely do better. Most stock blades aren't that great anyway. Now in cutting 45, I just use a two by six here, cut a 45 degree bevel in here, and my battery went dead about halfway through the cut. So I changed batteries and finished the cut. You can see a little rounding there where I restarted the cut. But when I checked the 45 all the way down through there, perfectly 45. This board has a tiny bit of cup in it. You may see a little light there, but the 45 degree angle itself is dead on. And I do love the fact that they put that anti-tipping on this saw just for these bevel cuts. At 45 degrees on this tube of six, you're cutting about two and an eighth, a little over two and an eighth inches all the way through and through. And so it does tax the saw quite a bit, but it worked just fine. It powered through it, made the cut. Now this saw doesn't have variable speed. I didn't really miss it here. I very rarely ever adjust the speed on any of my track saws. There's a whole list of features that are better on this saw versus the Ryobi. And here we go. First and foremost, the base of the saw is aluminum, where on the Ryobi it was plastic. The upper guard material around the blade is magnesium on this saw, and again, plastic on the Ryobi. The riving knife, the much, like this is the upgrade of the century between these two saws. It plunges with the blade on this, and it was fixed on the Ryobi. This makes this an actual plunge saw. You can start in the middle of a sheet good, or in the middle of a two of six, as you saw me do. The depth of cut is also deeper on this saw at two and a quarter inches versus 1.94 inches or something like that on the Ryobi. Also the depth scale on this rigid is both for on track and off track, whereas on the Ryobi it didn't have the dual measurements there. The depth of cut adjustment is much better on the rigid because of that push button slide style. I love this style. Similar to the Festool, similar to the Milwaukee, it just works better versus the wing nut style on the Ryobi. There's also a cut window right here that you see that I figured out those numbers basically mean the, the depth of the cut. You kind of get a visual representation of how deep you're plunging just at a quick glance. The RPMs on this saw are also higher at 5,000 versus the Ryobi at 4,300. This also has the anti-tip feature, which the Ryobi did not. And this has a swiveling dust port where the Ryobi was fixed. This also has detents at zero, 22 and a half and 45 degrees where the Ryobi was just zero and 45. It just stopped there. A few things I wish was better on the rigid that could be improved on hopefully in a future version. First and foremost, I know that they have their own tracks and the reason they do that is what I'm told is so that they make sure everything fits like it's supposed to and cuts accurately. When you start mixing and matching tracks and saws, then I have seen a little bit of variation there and I see what they mean by it could throw things off. So they went with their own style. It's perfectly fine as long as you're staying in their system. I would like to see the next version have a tiny bit more power. This one has plenty of power, but just a little bit more would be nice. Variable speed is a nice to have. Not really necessary, but I would like to see it on there just to be nice to have. Battery life was fair on this. I think that if you're cutting sheet goods, you'll be perfectly happy with the battery life. When you start getting into the more demanding cuts, like the thicker woods, the bevels, I think that's where you're gonna run into little battery life issues if you don't have like eight amp hour or higher batteries. I've got the six amp hours, they work well. You do need the high output here. I think the lower output batteries or the standard batteries will work. They're just not gonna give you as much oof and they're not gonna give you as much battery life. So they recommend four amp hour or higher. I actually think it's six or higher would be better. Eight is even better than six. So if you got eight or sixes, you'll be good. And I do understand why they have the smaller tracks. I do wish those were 30 inch versus 27 and a half inch. That would just give you the full five foot of cut when you put them together 
and you would still have those smaller tracks for portability and cutting smaller pieces. But I have really started to like the smaller ones for those smaller cuts, the smaller strips of plywood, smaller two buys. Like it's handy to have that, not have to balance this on that small piece of wood. So I do understand why they went with that. And it's also for shipping and packaging, I'm sure. But 30 inches, come on, give us three and a half more. Or three, seven, three, seven, three, seven, three, seven, three, seven, three, Give us two and a half more, math. And one more negative, I think the dust collection adapter or port there should be just a little bit deeper. I think that's what the problem is. I can't get this Festool all the way in there. So I'm gonna get an adapter for it and I think it'll work perfectly fine then. I just wish it was more standard to my Festool hose. <laughs> just, I'm a Festool guy, okay? If you ask me which one you should get on the Rigid versus Ryobi, hands down, get the Rigid. You will be much happier with the Rigid. They sent me the Rigid and the Ryobi, okay? So this is full disclosure. I was not happy with that Ryobi. You can go watch that review after this one and see just how much I didn't like it. They sent me that one. I've since passed that on to someone else who thought they could use it for sheet goods. I was happy to give it to them. This is a much, much better saw than the Ryobi in my opinion. Now, if you're looking at Rigid versus Milwaukee or Festool, I think that's where you're going to start trying to nitpick things that you would like to have or doesn't have on this saw, like variable speed, a little bit more power, the bigger full-size tracks, things like that. Milwaukee has a pack out, Festool has a sustainer case. Those things are nice to have, so you just weigh your options there. But I don't think you will be disappointed in the rigid saw if you choose to go on that platform. You also get that, can't be understated, lifetime service agreement, which I had to use on my actual, this, this here. <laughs> they fixed it free after five years, so... That was nice. Now, how much is this track saw? It's gonna retail at $399 for everything you see in the box. You saw me pull it out of the box. That, in my opinion, is the best. I'm a, I don't even wanna call this the budget track saw, but as far as budgets go at this price range, the best, in my opinion, budget track saw you're gonna buy at this moment in time. Better than the Craig, which I was recommending previously at this price point. This is a well-made track saw. Take it with a grain of salt, they sent it to me. But I've tested Craig, Festool, Wynn, Milwaukee, now this one, the Ryobi. This is my pick for anything under $400. And if you add that 60 inch track for another $99 retail, you've got a screaming good deal for four or $500, come on. This saw is scheduled to be released July 24, 2023. So if you're watching it before that date, that's why you can't find it. But you can come back to this video, check the link in the description or the pinned comment and find the direct link to it once it's available. It may be time for a head-to-head -head battle on this rigid Ryobi, Milwaukee, all the TTI brands. That might be a fun video. Let me know if you'd like to see that. If you like this video, you gotta check out the Ryobi track saw review and just see how much I didn't like it. Click that box, click the box, get you a big old virtual fist bump. Or if you're more interested in the Milwaukee line, check that one out.